How do you create an awesome horror protagonist? How do you create an awesome horror protagonist? Antagonist or protagonist? Uh, both. Both. <laughs> I said protagonist, but let's do both. I think it just comes down to, for me in particular, what horror films inspired you the most. And for me, I have certain ones that were important to me or influenced me, certain horror directors that influenced me more so than others, certain life experiences, I think, certain real life fears. I think for me, I, tr I, I, I take the DNA contained with all of that and I try to put it into a memorable, memorable character. I think I don't really wanna do a character that we've seen a million times before if I can help it. Mm -hmm. I wanna make someone where you truly don't know what's gonna happen next, where you feel the stakes are heightened. Um, one of the tropes and one of the consequences of, of, of following the similar structure uh, when we're writing screenplays is the audience kind of by this point knows where it's going most of the time. They've seen everything. It's hard to really fool them. So whenever I'm putting together a story and whenever I'm coming up with characters, whether it's a protagonist and certainly an antagonist, is I want to do someone who, if it's a horror piece, someone who scares me. And um, you know where that comes from just depends on what, what, what the story is. But I want them to be memorable. I want them to be unique and, 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 and to stand out. I think it'd be fun if one day, if I ever did that type of story, I made one of those guys who becomes iconic. Why not have it be the next Pennywise? You know, you've seen these, these fun posters they'll do where all the bad guys are in a movie theater. I want one of my guys to be there. <laughs> you know, I want them in that group. Someone that kind of just stands out, just like the filmmaker themselves has to find a way to stand out from the crowd. I'd love to come up with a character that, you know, people remember and kind of stands the test of time. I think that's the goal. Well, I mean, do you think that um, the person has to be real likable? Let's just take Carrie. And I know that I use that a lot, but yeah. I found Carrie to be a very likable uh, character. I, I know sure. maybe people do, but, and I found that um, the, the antagonist in, in the film to be very unlikable. Yeah, I, I think as always, each story is organic and the characters have to be true to what the story is. I am attracted to, I think, good guys that aren't squeaky clean and bad guys that aren't vaudeville bad, twirling their mustaches. I like to muddy it up. I like gray characters. I think that's something that people can relate to a lot. Um, if you see a bad guy that at times I wouldn't say you empathize with, but you can understand a little bit. Definitely not a James Bond villain. This is someone who is more relatable and in that sense can be more scary. It could be someone you know or someone that you can believe running into someday. And same thing with a good guy. I'm far more interested in a protagonist who I can relate to. And most people, you know, they're not perfect. Um, they've got flaws and maybe they've had some things in the past that they regret. Um, I wouldn't go as far as to say they have, you know, big sins hiding in their closet, but you know, they have imperfections and maybe they've done things they're not proud of. I think that makes for a far more interesting character. Now, again, since I've mentioned James Bond, if you're doing James Bond, people want a James Bond villain. They want, they want a little bit of the vaudeville in there. And that's fine. And, and for Carrie, you'd mentioned, I mean, Carrie, she had to be likable. She, I think, and they, God, Sissy Spacek was amazing in it. You had, kind of had to feel she was literally a real girl in high school who was kind of a loner, the outsider. And that's the way that character had to work. And her mother was terrifying, and she had to be. You know, and I, I don't think making that mother empathetic would have worked from that story. So the kind of great character I'm talking about, you know, comes down to the appropriate story that it's used for. So, but for me, th those are the kind of characters that attract me, good or bad. Um, and, and generally when I'm coming up with a story, I look for ways to really kind of flesh them out in that manner. And then you had the Betty Buckley character who to some could have seemed like the bad guy, but she was, uh, you know, very altruistic to Carrie yeah. and was almost like prodding her and like this tough love. And I thought that was a great thing because she didn't have that. She had all these different forces. Yeah. Listen, I think whether you're making someone who's a little bit muddy or they're just full on bad or full on good, I think the goal should be to make these characters, you know, three dimensional. You should almost be able to feel their motivations just by watching their face or their actions or what they're doing in the scene, not necessarily only with dialogue. 
Um, and, and, you know, from any writing standpoint, that's what you're always aiming for. No one really ever, I think, sets out to write what they would call kind of the cardboard, you know, or the carbon copy, you know, characters, someone who feels very two or one dimensional and very flat. And they're kind of saying what you expect them to say. No writer sets out to do that on purpose, I think. But, you know, um, it's a tricky thing to really flesh characters out on the page. You know, I'm sure when they wrote, you know, Carrie, they didn't have Sissy Spacek there to flesh it out. They didn't have her there to bring it to life. Someone originally had to bring that character to life on the page. It's a hard thing to do. And I think um, it's something that writers must demand of themselves to really aspire to and work on and really try to get there as, as best they can. And am I there yet? I don't know, but I try to be. And, and uh, going forward, as always, as in everything I do, always trying to push it to the next level. Just get a little bit better, hone your craft and, and, and keep going further and further. I think I'll do that until I die. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know any filmmaker who feel, or writer who feels they've finally got it. They finally got it, you know, at some point. I think they're all, even the best of the best, I imagine, are still honing their craft. Well, with the Nightmare on Elm Street series, or, or you know, um, it seemed like the, the, the protagonist would change, but the antagonist was always the same. And so, am I, am I correct in that? It's been through several the series, or yes. through the first film. For the, for the well, there were a few. Oh, there are many of them. Yeah, so yeah. I'm just trying to remember correctly. So it seemed like the the protagonist always changed, but the antagonist was always the same. Yeah, he needed more people to kill. I guess so. Yeah. Okay. All right. And and then you put in the music too, so it was oh, like sure. this fun sort of almost party feel to a lot of it. But then. You knew something. Franchises are tricky. I give people a lot of credit for trying to take them on. This is, um, had you mentioned Nightmare on Elm Street? Because, yeah, I, I remember thinking that when I watched oh, about a year ago, the original film. It's a scary movie. It's a really scary movie. Um, and I had forgotten how popular it was. It went on to span five or six films or whatever it was. But it became so popular. And this happens in a lot of horror franchises that the original antagonist, uh, becomes part of the, you know, pop culture zeitgeist. He eventually became the comic relief in his own movies. Whenever he, Freddy was in the scene, he was given all the funny lines. It was very strange. <laughs> right. I think I remember that. Yeah. And then they took a break for a few years and they made the new nightmare where they made him scary again. But they needed that break. He was like a different character. Still Freddy Krueger, but he was he looked a little different. He was very dark or whatever. It's, uh, it's it, <laughs> you know... But that's Hollywood. That's it. In writing a franchise, it's just another complication, I'm sure, as a writer, to come in. Um, you just kind of have to go with the flow and make it work. But I do remember that. I do remember there being a drastic change along the you know, life of that storyline. And you're right. It was one antagonist, always one antagonist. And the protagonists would come and go and survive or not, <laughs> not survive. You know, yeah, I enjoyed it.